Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. I have a return favorite, <laughs> a darling from the South, a R- debutante, a real my Southern former Belle. office wife. We mm-hmm. shared an office together, Fortune Feimster. Heather McDonald. Welcome back. So good to be to back. Juicy Scoop. There was some Juicy Scoop rumors going on about us. What was happening? What were people oh, saying? One of the things I talked about, like friendships ending over COVID and stuff. Just yeah. Like, and someone's like, do you think she's talking about Fortune? Really? And I was like, no. Fortune's just been on tour doing 12 billion shows. And I was just at your dinner. When yeah. was that? Like two months ago? I know. But over the last few months, there were some rumblings that mm. people thought that, you know... Well, truth be told, and you know this, that there was a big chunk of time during the pandemic we didn't see anybody. Oh, yeah. Because my wife is a huge germaphobe, pandemic aside. Yes. So she was keeping it pretty yeah. held, da- like, held down. We, I wasn't and, seeing a lot of people. And, you know, I will admit, like, if you were to give me a grade yeah. on, you know, um, the best COVID behavior and the worst COVID behavior... You would have been the best for what sure. Would you give me? I think I'm a I like think a D. I, I thought a C plus. I I thought a C plus. Maybe a C minus. Okay. You were living life pretty. But also, it was making hardcore you know, I was sensitive to when people were you, reprimanding me, and so that's why when. I did before, why I went out on stage and said about all my vaccinations and then fell on my head because that, I really wanted people to know, like, I heard you. Yeah. I got it done. Well, that was the thing. You were living your life, but also aware yes. that these were the times we were in. So you go, I know, I, this, I, I get it. I hear you. I yes. shouldn't be doing this, but also I'm doing this. So, you know, you had an awareness yeah. about it, but you were still doing it. Yeah, but I mean, it, it would happen like I would be doing something and Mm -hmm. then like the following week somebody would all of a sudden be like okay i don't think i want to see you or i or like jeff lewis would be like i you know someone would point out that i was talking to a stranger on a insta story in mammoth i would see you dancing in restaurants yes (laughs) so so i was like probably i'm not gonna go see heather so there was a couple of things. Yeah, so, there was a well, couple. Where we I, were getting clo- I had a little bit of the, the COVID stink on me, even though I never got COVID. <laughs> well, that's the thing yeah. that's that's really, <laughs> yeah. and I want to circle back to a couple of things. But that's the thing that's crazy, because we were very close to going out and about again. Yes. Um, when, uh, when Jeff Lewis had that Christmas party. We were invited. Right, yeah. And we kept going back and forth about... Are we going to go? Because Omicron was starting to, like, rear up again, but it wasn't as hardcore yeah. as it got over the holidays. And and we decided last minute we weren't going to go. And thank goodness, because a bunch of people got COVID. But, and then I go, I, I was like, Heather had to have gotten COVID <laughs> no. because she was, like, singing. You were, like, spraying your germs over all over everybody. You were taking <laughs> selfies, like, the kind of selfies, cheek-to-cheek selfies, and... Of all people, you did not get it. No. And I was like, never got it. It is truly crazy. So then we went back into our hermit shell, but then we saw you at your dinner. Was that early December? It was before. You had it at the like perfect time. Yes, I had it right before people started to get it. Yeah. So I saw you there, but you said to me, like, you know, whenever I wanted to come, I honestly just don't ever think to ask to come anywhere. I just assume if people want me, they'll ask me. I and always I just want didn't, you. And I I'm so glad ask. you let me know because top secret. Yeah. But you have a big project going on. Yeah. And you'll be taken out of our vicinity for a while. I'm going to be out of town for four months filming something. Yeah. So I texted Heather. I said, I'm... I'm hearing a few rumblings. I wasn't sure what was happening on the juicy, <laughs> juicy scoop uh, forums and whatnot. But I'd heard a few things here and there where people were like, when are you coming back on juicy right. scoop? I didn't know all the like, are they f- not friends anymore rumors. <laughs> I just assumed people knew that we were friends. Um, and I texted Heather. I said, I'm about to be gone for four months. Yeah. Let's Let's get one in, girl. 
I know. Let's and have I'm an so, afternoon delight. So excited. We have so many <laughs> juicy things to talk about. Yes, yeah, just an afternoon, just our fun. Mm-hmm. First thing that happened over the week, and I don't know if you heard this, but uh, Luanne de Lesseps from Real Housewives in New York, you know she's a cabaret singer. Yes, okay? I have not heard this story. She went to a famous gay bar in New York. Oh, okay. And got, was drunk. And she's, she has, you know, been on and off the wagon. Oh, really? Yes. But a I, gay bar, drunk at a gay bar in New York is very on brand for housewives. I mean, it's a great moment. I mean, it's a great moment. Andy Cohen's baby shower. Hello. <laughs> Everyone was like, so hammered. So, um, but the singing wasn't great. Oh, really? And the behavior oh, wasn't. She- her motto, which is her her hit song, "Money Can't Buy You Class." Money can't buy you class. Yeah, she was not that classy. I have it here. Okay, was she? Was this an impromptu performance? Oh, it was karaoke. Oh, I'm enjoying it. Yeah, wow. so that somebody caught it, and um, the gays she, didn't like that. I think it's a delightful. Well, song. I think everybody was fine with it, and I mean, for the Real Housewives of New York, where they've been like, we don't know if we're coming back, we don't know who's going to be oh, it, really? we don't know who's going. to... I'm like, she just bought herself another season for sure. Back drinking again. <laughs> I mean, this is exactly what we don't want sober housewives, unfortunately. Well, unfortunately, the show does capitalize off of people's life unraveling. Yes. They we, do really like that. We, yeah. And I, I want people in life to be very, you know, happy and healthy, but it doesn't, it's not as fun. It's not as fun. It's not you as have fun. to have a really awesome personality. Yeah. For your life to be going well. Like, I'm, like, I'm enjoying Gina on OC, even though her life is. Better? Gotten better. She's fun. She's been funny. All right. Well, we're going to get to OC in a minute. Okay. But first, I wanted to say that. So, Luanne Del Seps, um, hello, the Countess. The other things that they said is that um, she got up there and she, you know, was, she senses apologize and said, We are having a celebratory night. Yeah. I didn't act classy. She's she was in Midtown. She did all Give of that. Give her a break. <laughs> and then she said, But, um, other people reported that she went right to the piano guy and was like, play money, can't buy a class. And he's like, I don't like know that like by heart. Like, I can't just really start. <laughs> that is the greatest. To just and assume she's like, everyone it's knows. It's an iTunes hit, you know? And he's like, what? And like, yeah, she just assumes everyone knows it. Like, he could just like do it right off the bat. I mean, I wouldn't like, be able to play the piano to it, but I could be like, money can't buy yeah. your class. So but that's, that's all I got. That. And yeah. I feel like I'm a... True housewife fan. So she uh, got up there and was singing. And, you know, I remember you once said that I was slowly turning into you into a gay man. Yeah, you were. And so I want to do a quick improv. <laughs> You're a gay oh, man no. at this bar. <laughs> I am drunk. It was your turn to sing. I took the mic from you. Oh, no. And, I and just... I'm, annoy- I'm annoyed. You're a little annoyed. Okay. Like you're a fan, but you're annoyed. Okay. And then I'm Luann. Well, I'm sorry, my darling, but I mean, you're getting the cabaret for free. <laughs> oh, oh no. Oh, God. This is, is anyone catching this on the Insta? Oh, my God. This is so embarrassing. Uh, it's not, let me tell you something, motherfucker. It's not embarrassing. It's not embarrassing. I mean, I have been through it. I have had sold out shows. We've had to deal with shows being canceled. And I mean, really, bitch, we have to already deal with bachelorette parties taking over our gay bars. Now we have to deal with drunk ladies coming in and taking over <laughs> our karaoke. I'm just trying to sing some Lady Gaga. Can you please get off the mic? Lady Gaga is a fan of the Countess. She well, came to Feinstein's Down Under, where I perform. All and right. she, you know what, I, I can't, I, I can't, I'm just... I mean, maybe it was a hit 10 years ago, but okay. Bye, Mom. <laughs> that is bitchy. Thank you. <laughs> that was bitchy. Just say bye, Mom. That w- Thank well, you. Well, <laughs> I was going to offer you free tickets to my next show, but you know now I'm not. Fever you know, pass. I am not. Where I can't, everyone loves me. I don't know what's going on. I'm a gay icon. If you were gay enough, you'd know that clearly. I mean, if you saw what I did last night, you'd know I'm pretty gay. <laughs> that's pretty good i think she'll be just fine oh yeah now this ain't her first rodeo her show her cabaret show no 
I have gone a few times. Did you enjoy it? Yes, but she kind of has. She sings the songs, and it's the vibe of the audience is fun. Mm -hmm. But then she like does kind of stand up comedy in the middle of it. But she's like reading like little oh. stories. Like I'm gonna read from my diary. Okay, and she's like, hmm, Sonia was wearing a red dress that instantly came off again. <laughs> and she kind of like does these things. Uh -huh. And then, but now she has a new story because she would do the story about her being arrested. Oh, really? You know, and all and about Tom and everything. It's all part of the act. And now she'll have a new story to talk about, like her embarrassing night when she took over the gay bar and it wasn't well received. Right. So I think it's all... I think she's leaning into where she's at in life. First of all, I never thought she was an alcoholic. You never thought she was? Or? I don't, I still don't think she's an alcoholic. Right, right. I think that she, um, so I think she had to pretend to like be, yeah, act like she's sober and everything. And I think she's been sneaking champagne this whole time. <laughs> and vodka. <laughs> oh, hello, I didn't see you there. But you see me because you're watching this. But have you subscribed? Have you told a friend? Have you liked it? Have you copied the link and texted it to someone you love or you just feel like being a nice person to? Please do that. It keeps us going. So if you like watching Juicy Scoop here on YouTube, subscribe, like, and share. Kanye, you know, everything that's going on with him. The yeah. latest was that uh, Trevor Noah, mm -hmm. you know, talked very serious about what's going on because his own mother, I guess, I did not realize that his own mother was... Yeah. Killed by his father. I, I thought she survived. Oh, did she survive? She, survived. It, she right? was a, a definitely a or victim of killed? domestic violence. I felt like he said she was shot. Maybe she, she lived was. She, I do know she was shot. I think in the head by her. If it was a boyfriend, stepdad, I'm not sure. Uh, but I I thought she survived, but I'm not sure. Anyway, he you know has been talking about this for a while, right. and then um, and because he is hosting the Grammys. Mm -hmm. And then all this stuff with Kanye and the threats that he's made. Then he had the 24-hour suspension on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Anyway, now he will not be performing. He's been banned from performing at the Grammys. And he's been nominated for five Grammys. Mm -hmm. Listen, these award shows are suffering. I mean, <laughs> like, uh, all right. Well, what's funny. I wasn't going to watch it anyway, but yeah. What's funny is that two years ago, didn't he pee on his Grammy? Well, Isn't there a video of oh, him that he, where he, he like propped it in the toilet, right? I believe so. And then so. he peed on it. So yeah, I, what does he care? So I'm like, already there's clearly some issues with him and the Grammys. And the, I mean, I don't remember what the issue was two years ago. Yeah. But, and then was, was it the Grammys or was it the MTV Awards where he interrupted Taylor Swift? I, I think that might have been the Grammys or the American Music Awards or something, okay. where he took the award. Because he said I mean, he's he's unpredictable when it comes yeah. to award shows. So. so maybe it's yeah, let's not. But he's I think he's still closing the um, Coachella. Oh, Coachella, right? Yeah. VMA. What? Oh, VMAs. VMA. That does yes. sound very MTV esque, you know. But I don't know. Yeah, there's just so much going on there. With I, everybody's just kind of like, just keep this. Kanye, so I was um, in Palm Desert this weekend mm -hmm. at a very... Do you go a lot? Yes. It seemed like My it. sister lives out there, yeah. and then I have other friends out there, and I just like it. Do you leave your family behind? Yes. That would be what I would do. <laughs> if yeah. I had kids, I, I would feel like, bad. mommy's got to have a weekend. Honestly, I felt kind of badly because Brandon is old enough like to stay by himself, but uh -huh. I felt kind of bad because it turned out to be like... A lot, like we stayed the whole Sunday practically too, so I felt a little bit bad. But I brought him home Panda Express, and oh, that's nice. And then we watched the latest episode of the Dropout. Oh my, oh my and god, he really likes the Dropout. That was like yeah. me when I was a kid. Whenever my mom, not not to <laughs> bum you out, but you're you just made a face like, oh no, is Brandon headed on Fortune's path? <laughs> <laughs> My mom would go, she had a man friend that she was with <laughs> uh, who lived like 45 minutes away. So she'd often go to his house for the weekend Ooh. and it would bum me out. But I would forgive it because she would bring me like a big old sub sandwich at the end of the weekend. And I go, well, I was bummed she left, but I do like this sub a lot. <laughs> So, oh my gosh! No, I mean, <laughs> so he might he he might associate Panda Express with being lonely. Just saying. 
Oh, no. No, I know. I felt kind of badly. And my friend even said we stayed at her gorgeous house, and she was like, you could have brought your, you know, son. But my sister was out of town. If my sister was in town, then, like, her kids, they could have all done something together. He would have been bored down there. Anyway, we stayed in the gated community that the Kardashians own their mansions in. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. So I saw the lot, the double lot that Kim and Kanye own. They haven't started building yet. Okay. I'm really hoping that Kim can buy him out. I right. think that would be a disaster if they cut it in half oh. and each bought their own house yeah. there. I don't think that's going to work out. Um, well, didn't he already buy a house across from her? He Yes, her that's in rest? Hidden Hills. Yeah. The so gated that's... community in Woodland Hills is the gated community in uh, La Quinta Palm Desert. She needs to have she her own escape. gated community. She doesn't need to have her own. <laughs> so, but um, also this weekend, Pete Davidson, he is loving this fame. You think I would, oh, be stre- yes. I would be stressed out of my mind? You're about not Pete it. Davidson, but you don't think he's stressed no, a little bit? I think he loves it. Really? I don't know. I don't know. Is stress about the Kanye stuff or just the overwhelming fame? Uh, I think it definitely. It seems to overwhelm him sometimes. The the fame. Well, he probably likes it, but is also overwhelmed by it. Well, I mean, he he took. I guess you know he doesn't have Instagram, so right. that's kind of a cool move. But then he like took, he doesn't need it. Everyone talks about him right. every day. And then he took, but he took, I guess, Scott Disick's Instagram or his phone and filmed him hanging out with Scott. Oh, really? And a couple of Travis and all this, and mm-hmm. hanging out on the couch, and he did like a funny face, like, "Can you believe I'm here, like, with the Kardashians? Like, I'm, you know, this yeah. guy that made fun of him my whole life, and now I'm, you know, boning the main one. Uh-huh. And you know, it's all good. It's fine. They went to Little Rain um, Disick's uh, baseball game this weekend. Travis, him. Travis oh, Scott. Re- oh, really? And Everyone's yeah. palling around. Yeah, and Scott. Okay. Well, yeah. is he still doing SNL, right? Uh, is he? I mean, it seems like he's quite busy hanging out here. I mean, is he, like, I know. Skipping they're week- they're I very mean, West Coast. I could see SNL. I could see Lauren Michaels just being like, you're bringing so many more eyes to SNL. Like, if you need to go and skip a... A week, a weekend doing it to kick, and keep this train going. I think we're okay with it. I mean, it'll be curious. I'll be curious to see how it unfolds. You I mean, know, he got the three tattoos. I mean, that is that's a lot. I mean, because they haven't even and been together was, a year. And one was my girl's a lawyer. A lawyer yeah, and then she's Kim not really got a lawyer branded. Yet. Got branded. I mean, branding is. I mean, he already had a bunch removed. I wonder if he got his branding from um, the Hobby Lobby. That's where that Sherry Papini, who faked her own death. What? Don't you know this story? I don't know this story. I've been out of the juicy scoop. It was. It's one of my favorites. A cute, yeah. a cute, thin blonde mom four years ago pretended yeah. to be kidnapped while she <gasps> stayed at her oh, own yeah. boyfriend's house. She made him go to Hobby Lobby. Oh. It was a thing, something she found on Pinterest from yeah. Hobby Lobby. And then she had him brand her to say that the the female Mexican lesbians uh, that kidnapped her for 26 days, what? they branded her. You know what? she branded herself. I guess I did not know the follow-up to that story because I remember it being like she faked her own thing, yeah. but I didn't realize she was at a boyfriend's house. She never said that the Mexican girls... The fake Mexican girls that she made up in her head that she said were kidnappers. She never said they were lesbians, but I just assumed oh, they were, were lesbians. But you know that was one of the th- that was that was one of the not things very that, nice of you to assume that it was lesbians were, that are branding people. I, I didn't make sense. It didn't make sense. And you know what? The experienced <laughs> cop he actually said that like women don't kidnap people. Right. Like, and you know. I don't mean to out you, but you are a le- married lesbian. Yeah, that's true. Do, you. <laughs> it, do you I don't think know. I, couples I, have a desire to kidnap no, people? No, I personally don't know of any lesbian kidnappers. <laughs> I don't know of any women kidnappers. He's right. Yeah. Any time you've heard of a woman being involved in the kidnapping, it's the man that's at the helm right. of it. And they're like a, a, a victim of it, too. Right. Like they're, they're scared. and yeah. They, yeah, they've been sucked under but his spell. Normally yeah. women, they're like, I don't want to deal with this. Just yeah, one and, more person to clean, clean after and feed. Like, just don't kidnap people. Yeah, no, it seems like a lot, yeah. of, a lot of effort. But also you shouldn't. There's so many ways to get caught if you were trying to pretend that you got kidnapped. There's a lot of there's yeah. going to be a lot of holes in your story, right? You know yeah. what I mean? It's all just because you want to hang out with a boy. No, in the end, they never even screwed. No way. No, she she I, and he was like not cute, and I think he was just kind of dumb about it. Like I think he uh-huh. just um, 
got kind of sucked into her spell and was like, okay. And then she was like, no, I'll take Whoa. the room and you sleep on the couch. I don't know how I missed that. I, Jesus. I, I, think she just wanted a, I think she was just a weirdo <laughs> gone girl wanting attention. And maybe a midlife crisis. Yeah. Or just, uh, yeah. Know? I think she's not right, but still she needs to do some time. Okay. Real Housewives mm-hmm. of OC. Yep. They had their reunion, and they had the reunion looks, and it has not been well received. Really? Shannon looks good. You don't like Shannon? Shannon's, Shannon's, I think, looks good. I mean, Gina's... Gina's is kind of an odd thing. Uh, Oh, not Gina. Whereas Gina Gina has a crop top on. A lot of people, she has a little bralette and But her body looks good. I think that's why she wanted to show it off. But, you know, you are sitting on a couch. Right. Which is a challenge. For like, a crop top. For anybody, no truth, matter what size truth you are. Don't, never worn a crop top, so I can't relate. Um, I mean, I've worn shirts that are a little too short. Yeah. And it gets a little breezy under there. <laughs> and you know, you know when you're filming, they keep it really cold. So that's probably not the best choice for yeah. comfort. Uh, yeah, this dress, uh, yeah, yeah, I can see that. People, I think Shannon looks, I do like Shannon's look. She looks good. These dresses in the middle are wild colors. Um, Noella is so thin. Yeah. She is, you know, she, and it looks good. I mean. Her hair is so long. Wow. Well, I think she, you know, that's all her hair, but whatever. Well, right, but it's just so long. This- oh, speaking of Noella, have you ever given anyone a gift of a stack of vaginas? No, that whole bit was very confusing to me. I had to rewind it a couple of times and ask Jax, like, what is she saying? I don't understand. Why didn't you just call me? I could have explained it I know. It to you. Well, then Jax was explaining it to me. How, How did Jax explain it to you? Clearly, I've never had a stack of vaginas. So it was just like, how did Jax explain it to me? I'll explain it. was it. ladies... So you, all the ladies are wearing lingerie. <laughs> okay. And they... Lay on top of each other, okay, on the edge of the bed, okay. So, what? so the kind of lingerie they How many wear ladies? have open vaginas. So mm-hmm. it's like lingerie, but then an open vagina. Oh okay? my god! And then Sweet James, attorney at law, personal injury attorney, he then comes up, and then this he... is according to Noella. By the way, we weren't there. Okay. <laughs> So let's say allegedly. <laughs> allegedly, I imagine, since her husband at the time was Sweet James, the attorney, I'm guessing she said she gave the stack of vaginas. She was part of it. Uh-huh. I don't know if she was the bread or the meat or what, like because it's like a sandwich. Uh-huh. She, tomato, I don't know if she was the, the tomato, middle. I don't know if she was the bottom. The lettuce, was the top. cheese. And then Are we he, talking club sandwich? Yeah. <laughs> and then I think he comes up and inserts himself. That seems, in the fun of it, of knowing like who's is what. That it seems more complicated than a stack of vaginas. Like there's, a, it seems like some, a lot of coordination had to go into that. Yes, I mean a it lot is, of uh, hey, people, that's truly insane. It's, it's, a lot of people say they don't like her on the show. I'm like, I think she's the only one that brought some some interesting things for me to talk about on Juicy right. Scoop. Well, a stack of vaginas. Is I brought a stack of vaginas like seven times, and oh I mean, otherwise, gosh. I don't know what else there's, I've there's never to heard talk of about on the show. A thing. Wow, but also, you know, <laughs> who wants me on the top of a pyramid? Do you want to ask? <laughs> at- <laughs> I'm the base, baby. Why don't, why don't you ask me, since I'm Noella, oh, I'm bisexual. No. Oh, no. Um, and I'll tell you, just ask me anything about my life. I'm going to be Noella. Um, hi, Noella. I, hi, I, Fortune. I heard that you've been having some hard times lately. I mean, my husband was my best friend. And he just took off Puerto Rico. And, I mean, it's devastating. What are you doing to cope? Well, I'm meeting this interesting ladies in OC. Um, Heather Dubrow hasn't been exactly nice. Uh, I mean, I don't really enjoy Dr. Jen, but I just, um, I'm international, I'm interracial, I'm bisexual, and I just don't think the people of OC can handle it. Well, is there anyone you get along with? 
My mother, she's the only person in my family that can be featured on the show. Oh. Both my children, both my exes won't let them be on the show, and both my exes left. So I am a single divorced woman with a mother and um, a father who is a weatherman that I never met. Do you have any regrets? Do you wish you hadn't done the show? Do you feel like things w- might not have turned out this way? It's so interesting that you talk oh, about no. that. Because... Um, <laughs> Prior to doing the show, I was married to Sweet James. We would go by all the billboards together. And now I'm just alone. Oh, no. It's been really difficult. Oh, well, um, all right. Well, but I'm a star. Do you want some, <laughs> do you want some charcuterie? No, would you like a stack of vaginas? <laughs> no, definitely not. Um, <laughs> do you notice that they have like a thousand charcuterie boards on that show and you know what bothers me the most it's just like there's so much left over it's too uh, no, large of a charcuterie never... board for the two women to sit down and just put a little charcuterie board together what do you call it Char- Char- charcuterie charcuterie <laughs> Charcuterie. Charcuterie. You gotta put that cooter I, in there. I like to call it charcuterie. <laughs> you gotta put the cooter in charcuterie. <laughs> I love it, but it's kind of overwhelming to they me. They do it every time they get together, someone has a charcuterie board. Yeah. And it's just, it's the most like, speak about like a, a like not a COVID friendly situation. I know. Well, any buffet For, style yeah, but, situation. Yeah, but it's like taken off in the in the height of COVID. It's been the, the driving force of like women creating their own charcuterie boards. Good job. Thank you. I I tweeted early on like it, drink every time you see a charcuterie board. <laughs> you'll be hammered. <laughs> now, Heather Dubrow, a lot of people are very disturbed by her dress. It's not very it's Heather dubrow ish It's not flattering in the top part. There's like, see, it's like there's some, like, lines and stuff. Okay, I'm putting my prediction out. If it's already been proven, fine. What? I would bet money. Uh-huh. This is from the Her Heather's closet. Yeah, Heather's closet. Because yeah. it it doesn't look like it's, you know, a designer type of thing that she would normally buy. And also, are these... That's like the hem. I that's mean, the it's, hem, right? I mean, this is probably going on... The dress is Christian Serrano. Oh. It is? Uh-huh. Okay, never mind. Sorry, Christian. Sorry, he makes really great things. Uh, maybe it just... I just don't know why she it could, would choose it. could just it. be the bad, a bad angle or you picture. You know what? Normally, like, on other housewives, they the production company will say, like, everybody wear white. Oh, and they yeah. all look great. Or the Potomac girls all wore, like, purple or, right. like, all looked really great. This doesn't seem coordinated at all. No, I think that, honestly, they... Had it, they let them go in a horrible direction because they're like, yes, because this show has gotten very little buzz this season as far as like even fans oh, talking really? about it. But put them in a bunch of awful outfits and we will talk. And Why I think you- they just want people to talk and watch the reunion. And so I think they were like, we're not going to color coordinate them. We're going to tell them we're, they're going to give us each three dresses. We're each going to pick the worst one um, for them to wear. I think they need, I think they got to go back to the some of the OGs. Let's get Vicky. Let's get Tamra. Anybody else? Kelly Dodd. Oh yeah, I do think Kelly's pretty fun to watch. Yeah, I, I, do, I think they I might. Do. I think they might get themselves back on the show after this season because you're just not really invested in a lot of no. the ladies. No offense, they all seem <laughs> lovely, um, but I think you need. I definitely think Kelly. Yeah, Tamara, Vicky, back just on the show. Back. Just bring them back. Bring Why do we get rid of them? I know. Just bring them back. You don't have to pay because, like, much. even though, like, you can disagree with like people's points of view or yeah, whatever, yeah. but that's the point of the show is right. that it's like all these different hodgepodge of people bringing their their stuff to the show. Yeah, you know. Um, Peter came up with a great idea. We okay. were going to produce this. Fraud Con. It's, it's called Fraud Con. It's going to be a cruise. Oh. And some of the speakers will be oh, Elizabeth no. Holmes. Whoops. Oh. Elizabeth Holmes. Sherry Hello, Papini, everyone. who I just talked to you about. Which one is she, her? This middle one? Sherry Papini is the one Papini. that was fake. Uh, <laughs> fake. <laughs> Papini. <laughs> that was like Peppercini. 
Yeah, she's the one uh, who we can then ask her, like, how did you come up with? Well, right. she hasn't admitted it yet because she's been oh, arrested and she's all this still stuff. In Once she comes up with her story, this then is the be Tinder good. swindler. Tinder swindler. This is the fry guy. Yes. This is inventing Anna. Uh huh. Wait, who's this? Bad vegan, which came out this. I haven't week. watched that. Oh my god, is uh, she not a real vegan? Or but no. she's a bad vegan. <laughs> The only thing that was real about her is that she was a vegan. Okay, but she was a bad in, in a nutshell. In a nutshell, um, she met a guy uh -huh. who was another dirty John that lied about being like a Navy SEAL and in like black ops and all the stuff. Okay. Said he was super wealthy, had super wealthy family, went to pretend to buy a fourteen million dollar house, all this kind of stuff. Okay, made according to her made her give him all this money that was really the investor money for the vegan restaurant that was like this hot spot where Alec Baldwin okay. was obsessed with her, but then met Hilaria Baldwin at the vegan restaurant. Okay. And that's and, where, that's where Alec met his wife at yes, that restaurant. Yeah. Oh, wow. And then she ran out of money, didn't pay any of her staff of her two restaurants. Oh, no. And then she and the guy who was her legal husband, took off oh, no. and were just like gambling in Vegas. And then they ended what? up at Dollywood. To, uh, for fun or to work? <laughs> just to try to gamble and like hide out because she was like wanted. They were like, wow. she was currently wanted because I gotta she watch stiffed this. all these people. Mm, oh. it's, a, it's a pretty good one, but it, it could move a it's little, a little slow. In the end, she they get arrested because his credit card was used to buy a Domino's pizza. No, not no. But not they the said thing. she did not eat the Domino's. Well, she's a vegan, right? But that's what all the articles, yeah, got made. Were like, oh my god, can you believe that this woman who, the vegan restaurant? I'm like, I can't. Be First of all, it was raw vegan, so it was like oh, you didn't even wow. have to turn on a stove to make money at this place. But it was, but it was super popular. Yes, because it was like all the stars went there and how, Alec Bulge went there. How does a place even suddenly become the place that all the stars go to? You know what I mean? How does that I'm happen? telling you, this girl was one of those people that just was lucky. Okay. She was really pretty yeah. and she was like smart, yeah. you know? So, like, so, so she, she'd probably meet people and network and get somebody to post about it. Yeah, I mean, she was kind of weird socially. Like, she was very, in, but, but. People, yeah, I feel like she met a hot chef that started the restaurant. Then the hot chef and her broke up. She got to keep the restaurant because this other guy was like, I'll still be your main investor, and okay. but you can keep the restaurant. The point is she had that same thing that Elizabeth Holmes of Dropout had uh, in that she just got like old white men to invest in her. Right. And they really didn't care. What the product was. Or that if they were even getting paid back on time or whatever, where she really got in trouble is when she Nobody didn't let, pay her staff. Nobody's letting gals like me borrow money. <laughs> They're like, you got to work for it. <laughs> I do. I mean, I do think there's like a pretty privilege that. Uh -huh. And then also when you have it your whole life, you have this kind of confidence. You're used to no, it. Yeah. It's yeah. not like you were... You know, an ugly duckling that, like, mm. remember that mo sh that TV show, The Swan, where you really mm. were an ugly duckling? Mm -hmm. And then Dr. Dubrow was on that. Oh, he was? Yeah. Oh, and I then you become know. a swan. Yeah. And then they'd go back to their job at, like, the Dairy Queen, and their hair extensions would be falling out and everything, but they still oh, had, like, no. high cheekbones. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that was that show that was, was the that best. That was uh, when reality TV was, like, really taking a weird turn. Remember, yeah. it was, like, there was, like, two years of it where it was, like... What's happening now? Yeah. Like it was getting dicey. Right. Literally. But I guess she said she did the Netflix special and whatever money she got from it, she did finally pay back the workers. Okay, that's good. But I, she, you know what? I, I'm just not a fan. Like I think she's she can do, go on the fraud con for sure. With and, and then, So this is, a, this is a cruise idea that you have. Yes. We're, we're not sure if. The, the cruise will actually happen. No, I just want to put it out there before it happens and then everyone can say, remember when Heather talked about it with Fortune? Yeah, she thought yeah. of this idea already. I'm probably never going to execute it. Well, I'm just the, saying I, the problem it is, was my idea first. It is your idea first, but the problem is how can we trust that this cruise will happen? You know what I mean? <laughs> yes! And so then we had the Fire Festival guy and... Um, Cheese sandwiches for everyone. Or, or a stack of vaginas for everyone. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, Anna... Delvey of yeah. Inventing Anna, 
I guess she is still here. She doesn't want to go to so, Germany. Oh, they're She's trying been to extradite her? for a year. And her dad finally spoke. Okay. And he said she wanted to live. He told, tells Daily Mail. This is Anna Delvies. Actually, his name is Anna Sorokin is the real her real name. So okay. it's Mr. Sorokin. Said that um, she wanted to live like Paris Hilton and that he indulged his daughter with dance and French tutors, drove miles to buy her designer clothes, Whoa. and still gives her money. But she never once said she loved me. Oh, He says that she says things like, you know, um, well, I'm your only daughter, so you have to pay for me. Oh. Pay for it. Okay. What? Why are you so poor? Um, so That was a hard thing about getting into that show. God, that I voice, know that she was just... doing... Pretty good accent of the girl, yes. but it sounds so fake that you were it. So it feels cartoonish that you. I I had a hard time like getting into the show because I couldn't get past the voice. Well, she's starting a podcast. I would have just like <laughs> I would have just been like made an executive decision. Let's like do a German accent. Oh, you wouldn't. You don't think that she should have matched the girl? I don't think so. It's too. It's just too. I get that it's real, but it feels so. Yeah, like fake. You know what I mean? Right. I would have like maybe leaned into like one of one accent and not tried to imitate her voice. Well, I hate her. Oh, I do. I hate. I haven't watched. I hate. I, I hate Anna Delvey, show. and I cannot wait for her. To I didn't get make it past ten minutes and the show. leave here. Anyway, she's somehow she's getting money. Dad's still sending her money, yeah. and then she has the other people in the jail do her chores for her and stuff. No way, really? Yeah. Wow, she must be very she's, persuasive. Well, I think she, you know, pays with whatever chicken noodle, whatever ramen, or whatever you can uh -huh. buy at the little store. But um, yeah, but you know. I think, though, I I mean, look, fraud con, it's got to happen soon because I do feel like there's a new one. Like, there's a new one that just came out about the guy that created WeWork. I guess he's a fraudster, too. I like, there's so many fraudulent on people on TV right now. Yeah, he, like, had that company's estimate in the billions, but nothing to back it up or yeah. something like that. Are you watching The Dropout on Hulu? Uh, that is, oh, the Elizabeth Holmes one? Yes. I, I'm, I'm one episode in. It, it takes a, it's, I really like it. Okay. Okay. And it's gotten really good now because now it's like episode the, five. The swindle part. And now I like really, what I really wanted, which is what they're showing me. Yeah. Um, of course it's scripted, but based on like all the podcasts, the documentary. Yeah. Is like her, she knows it doesn't work. She's still hoping right. that they, maybe they can get it to work. But at a certain point, six months before they put it into the Walmart stores, wow. it's not working. And the boyfriend that she put as her CEO, the mm -hmm. older guy, he knows that they all know it. The scientists know That's it. And crazy. this is where now you know she's really fraudulent. But it's like she doesn't want to just go... Never mind. We can't do it. But, but it's already your, too late. Here's all your already, money back. Because <laughs> she took all this money and spent it on Theranos. And she hired all these people. And she's flying private. And she's wearing this black turtleneck. And she lo and she's kind of she bought into the, her own she narrative. the power of it. She, yes. Her, I remember at that time, everyone was talking about her. She was in all these magazines, magazines yes, and, and interviews. You're like, I can't believe this girl like thought of this incredible idea. She's going to change the world. Because I remember reading about it. She was it. like uh, yeah. getting as much attention as like Mark Zuckerberg did back then. You know, and that's just, what like, she everywhere. wanted. Yeah. So she was like, uh, probably, you know, just that power. Right. She just got it. It was intoxicating. Yeah, so we're but waiting it for so, her sentence. But, but yeah. yeah, it's good. It's on Hulu, Someone and I said, say it's good. I read in People or somewhere, she's like living in like a $132 million house right now. It's somebody else. She scored again. She but, married a hotel heir. Oh, really? And had his baby. Is that, scored again. Yeah. She's a real kid of privilege. Like, well, just everything, you know. So and she didn't want it, you know, she wanted it right away. When so, you just did not see, to, to see these levels of deception... And not see the cons many yeah. consequences for it is is weird. Well, um, Jesse Smollett, they let him out of prison. Did they? He's appealing did, his thing. Did they say what? I mean, how did he get released? 
Because his attorneys are really good, and they said he should be released like based a, on like this a home thing. Yes, okay. until this appeal is is, is exhausted, then mm-hmm. he can go to his time or not. Now, I would have Jesse on the fraud uh, fraud con cruise. He's adamant that he's innocent. I know, but he's got to just tell the story. And this is what he should do. I know he's kept this thing, but the real juicy. Jesse, the juicy Jesse juicy story. Juicy Jesse story is if at this point he was like, "Okay, this is what happened and why." Get let me go this route. Let uh-huh. me get the Netflix doc or get a scripted show done of what chose me, why I chose to do it, how I changed my mind. But what if he didn't? I really don't know. What if he didn't do it though? I I have okay. no idea. He did it, but it's okay. I'm just saying at this point. No one's going to do a Netflix doc uh-huh. where he still is proclaiming his innocence. Okay. If he goes the way of the bad vegan and and like and owns up, already knows if, if he did it and owned uh, up, already to knows it. that yeah, there's going to be something in the works. Right. So let me just be part of it. I don't know. That's what he has to do, and then he can go on mm-hmm. as the um, the the rehabbed fraudster. Uh-huh. Like I was, I did do this thing, but I saw the ways and then he will win. He can go on fraud con. He can do his Ted talks. He can have his own podcast and then he can start acting again with you. Are in you Toronto. Gonna, are you going to be his manager? You have it all mapped out. I don't want to be anyone's manager or write any movies or okay. even plan fraud con t- like itinerary. I, was about to say, I this put fraud, the ideas the out. Fraud con sounds like a lot of work. It's a lot of work for me, and I just, like, what it is is I put out the ideas, and then I just get the satisfaction when someone does it. Saying that you called it. And then they said, Heather said it first. Would you ever, we've talked about this before, is there a Juicy Scoop cruise coming at some point? I did, uh, like, a mini one. Okay. But it was not by itself. It wasn't all, you know, oh, all like, of us. Oh, it was yes. like, I'm going to be on this cruise small, if you want to yes, come. Yes, okay. yes, And gotcha. we had fun. Yeah. Um. I don't know what the future holds. I've got a long, well, cruise, I've got a lot of years the, ahead the of me. The pandemic made cruises a little like. Let's put a pin in these for a minute. Not for everybody. There's, I'm sure they're still going out. It to is. Sea. It is really. It is. It is a hard situation because no matter you're what on that they boat. do, whatever you know, no matter what they do and how strict they make it. Yeah. And then all the TikToks I've seen of when someone does get the COVID, get that tested with the COVID, awful. and then they put him in this like. Like a dungeon room. Yes, yes, the dungeon room. Like, oh, and yeah. then like they're like calling well, to get have, water. But they have to because... No, I understand they have they, to. But- they would infect the, this entire boat that can't go anywhere. That's why it's too dicey right now for me. And then... Not for everybody. People are... There's a lot of Heathers out there <laughs> just living their life. But, but for me, I can't do it. Not right now. That is really scary if you get it. That's the thing. So then, so yeah. then you're in the dungeon... And I saw this one TikTok where they're like, please, we, we don't have any water. Can you please give us some water? And they're just like, I'm sorry, but we're like short staffed. You're just going to have to wait. Oh, wow. And it's not like they can leave their room yeah, and go to the buffet. Because you're just stuck there. You can't like make water appear out of nowhere and you can't drink it out of the sink. Right. It's from the ocean, I'm assuming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a nightmare. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Well, I'm very excited you're here. A lot of people have been asking... Um, you know, for you to reprise your role as Samantha Markle. Right. She's, they're upset with each other again. Samantha right? Markle is currently suing Meghan Markle. I don't know if she's also suing like Oprah or whatever. But oh, no. In the Oprah, really? In the Oprah interview, Samantha. Why? I this, mean, <laughs> like, why? Let's just leave Meghan alone. My God. Samantha oh, oh. Markle, the older sister, is saying that. Because Megan said in the Santa Barbara Oprah interview okay. that, you know, her sister wasn't always Samantha Markle, that she took back the Markle last name once she became famous, you know, so she's kind of like to Oprah, like, so be, be you know, put the dots together of okay. like why this sister's after and me. And so is the so Samantha, sister's claiming defamation or yes, what? Okay. Yes. So, and she, and she said... Because of that, nobody bought my book. But Samantha Markle, Di- Diary of Princess Pushy Sisters. She would have to prove, basically. As- I bought it, though. Oh, you did. Well, I that's bought good. it and I read it this weekend. Oh, my gosh. The whole thing. Good for you. 
I mean, for her to prove that it, you know, the defamation thing, you have to prove it's not true. If right. She, if whatever Megan said, I don't know. I don't know the what happened. But yeah. if what Megan said is true, then it's not, there's no cause for yeah. a case. So he, so the dad said, I've been trying for almost four years to get to see my daughter and her ginger husband. Uh, well, I mean, face okay. To face. If you're already calling him a ginger, like, why would she want to see you? This they gotta like let it go. She is like like living her life. She could, has made it very clear she's done. And if your dad's referring to your husband as your ginger husband, that meeting ain't gonna go well. I mean. Yeah, I'd like to I see mean, my ginger husband face to face or my grandchildren. So I'd be thr- thrilled to come to s- to court and talk and defend my oldest daughter. So well, I read the book, and I'm going to give you the gist of well, it. Well, they keep making it it more and more clear why Megan doesn't have a relationship there. They've been very like it's a lot. Like just let her live her life. This is basically what she says in the book. Okay. I mean, it's her life story, but very little about Megan. But, like, it's so many, like, little snarky things in this book about Megan. And she calls her Meg throughout, Mm -hmm. okay? And and Megan calls Samantha Babe throughout. That's her nickname that the whole family called her Babe. Called Samantha Babe? Samantha Babe. Babe. Okay. And so, basically, she says real nasty things. Now, they grew up in Woodland Hills, which is where I'm from, and she called it, like, one of the chapters was you really did your research. The shady bunch of Woodland Hills. <laughs> Heather has shady all bunch these, of Woodland Hills. All these pages. Well, folded. you know, I I have some issues with siblings similar to this, oh, where okay. it's like a big thing with some of my older siblings is they would bring up that my parents paid for USC. Okay, bring it up a lot. Okay. okay. She goes on to make such a big deal, and and my private all girl high school, which. Megan went to one to Immaculate Heart. Okay. And she's saying little snarky things, Samantha. She's like, wow, I would have thought going to an all-girl Catholic high school that she would have some compassion and be nice. But she just wasn't. Like, throughout the whole thing, she's saying Megan Markle was just very particular. And at one point, she had to move home with her. They're 18 years apart. She had to move home. And she, and she said, and one day, Megan said, babe, can you just put the cap back on the toothpaste? And I was like, Wow. Like those, are, I swear to God, no. there's like nothing. And then, and then she's, you know, and then she goes, and then one day the dad goes, here's a catalog. So like maybe it was like a Macy's catalog. Yeah. Pick out what you want for Christmas. Okay. And she goes, and then I looked and I saw a beautiful topaz ring that was $300. And Megan said, babe, you're not getting that ring. Throughout the book, she's like, it's just like the ring that she didn't want me to have. Like, she'll bring it up. Like, there was so little of a relationship. So then she brings up, this is what really pisses me off. This whole thing's a nightmare because she goes to really didn't know each other that (laughs) I know. (laughs) They go to, she goes, gets into Northwestern, a private university, right? Babe does? No. Oh, Meg. 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 (laughs) Now. Uh, It's Meg. (laughs) Meg. So she brings up. (laughs) She goes, and my dad paid for that whole thing. She did not get scholarships or financial aid. Because at one point I did see that M- Meghan Markle talked about, like, going there and getting a scholarship or financial aid. Okay, she's like, no, my dad pays for it. And it was $250,000 a year. Mm, no. No. <laughs> she, and she says it again, a million dollars for her education. I'm like, well, maybe Northwestern and... Meghan Markle would like to sue you for defamation because it's not true. In mm-hmm. fact, we looked it up 20 years ago. On the high side, maybe it was 40000 yeah, a year. Yeah, I was no more than side. 50. And then, you know how she also had, she also got like the great internship, this international whatever. Okay. She makes it very clear that that's because my uncle got her that internship. Why does she care? Oh, she's just making it very clear in the book. It's that like so weird. She, then she wrote a movie. Oh. Well, Samantha did. Okay. And she really thought it would be good if her baby sister would be would, in would it. star in it. It's called Angel's Redemption. She doesn't seem to like her baby sister. Well, she was trying to be nice, you know, and she I thought mean, it would help expose that's the, her. That's what's crazy about this sibling. I'm like, you don't seem like you like her. Yeah. So why just let bygones be bygones and move on? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. live your life. If you don't like her, then why would you want to... Be around her. 
Um, it's weird. It's all it's too much. Right. Oh, Could, but you know, one thing, though, that she's still pissed about is that... That topaz ring. The topaz ring. And then also the... Um, the music, there were these music boxes that were Samantha's that Megan had taken over, according to her. Okay. And, like, she never got those music boxes back. So we now have the music boxes <laughs> and the and, candles. And the, cast- <laughs> <laughs> the candles and the topaz ring. So this is part one. I guess there's the part two. I don't know. Oh, I the, got, there's another whole other book? Yes. And I this mean, is, well, that's impressive. Books are hard to write. You and, got a whole part two in her. I mean, it just, it's All just, right. it's just a Tell lot. Color me impressed. Um, <laughs> oh, and also she talks about going to the public high school in Woodland Hills. Okay. In like the 80s or whatever, yeah. early 80s. And she talks about, oh, you know, and people for Christmas were talking about what Jaguar they're going to get. I grew up here. Yeah, I was about that, to say. That is not a neighborhood of a brand new Jaguar. Back in the day, in the 80s, right? Yeah. Especially in the 80s and everyone with Louis Vuitton. I'm people like, used to do their nose up at the Valley constantly. When I, I moved here in like 2002, they were like, the Valley is disgusting. Yeah. So in the 80s. <laughs> It was for sure disgusting. So I'm like, she's just like wanting to do a thing of yeah. like, oh, I was down to earth, but where I had to be forced to live when yeah. when my dad married Dory or Doria or whatever the mom's name is. Okay. So anyway, she also brings up that she's constantly was the firstborn. She and her brother were the firstborn mm-hmm. and that she felt that Megan just wanted it to be to be considered an only child. I mean, I can't. Can't say I'm blaming her. It so, sounds, it just seems like a lot of drama. So I don't know. The there's... lawsuit is happening, and I think that we should do a call. Okay. To see if we can just settle this lawsuit. All right. And Wh- who's book... calling whom? Um, it feels like you, Megan, would call. She want to squash it, right? Maybe I do want to squash it because I'm tired of hearing Juicy mm-hmm. Scoop talk about it. So. Now, you're going to be pretty excited to hear from me because I haven't called you in years, right, according right, right. to the book. Ding, ling, ling. Does the phone ever sound like that? Anyway, ding, ling, ling. Hello. Hi, babe. It's Meg, your sister. Who? Calling from, wait. Calling from Santa Barbara. Wait, 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 wait. Babe. Your babe. As in babe? Yes, Samantha. Is, this I'm is, calling you. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, this is the babe. You're the babe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's been so long since I've heard the name the babe. The babe. I forgot I'm the babe. You know, I'm... Meg, looking- I'm so glad that you called. I've been wanting to talk to you, clearly, for the last four years. Yes, I know. And, you know... um, I just want this to end. I don't even live in England anymore. Harry and I are just trying to get our projects off the ground. We did a podcast. I think we did two episodes before we quit. We are raising rescue chickens. And I am very busy as a young mother. I have two small children, and I don't need the stress of this lawsuit right now. It's absolutely ridiculous, babe. Oh, I clearly know where you live. I'm outside the gate right now. (sighs) Wow. Um... Nobody knows where we live. Well, I am your sister. Except for Oprah. Oh. Uh, have yeah. you been talking to Oprah? I I have saw the interview and I'm not happy about it whatsoever. I know you I know you're not and that's why this lawsuit is happening. But babe, this is just if you want to keep dad healthy, put, pitting him against me is not the way to go. I just want to live my life. What is it going to take for this to end? I don't care if you write a million books about me that no one reads. Well, first off, when you say babe, it doesn't feel like you mean it. Well, that is what I always called you, and that was the one part of your book that was true. Okay, well, I just wish that you had a little bit more love in your voice when you called me babe. I mean, I am exhausted. You know, you talk about me in your book. You talk about mm-hmm. how I... Oh, you read it. Yes, I did read. Well, I didn't, but I, I listened to Juicy Scoop, and she read it for oh, me. Oh, wow. And okay. basically... You know, you made some snide remarks about me being divorced on suits, on the um, let's make a deal. It happened. And I'm sorry that I wasn't able to be the lead in your movie that you put together yourself. Well, it's not too late for you to sign on. I'm just looking for a financier, and I know that your name 
being attached would basically put it over the edge. So I have a list of demands. Okay. I mean, things I want. Yes. Um, well, first off, those candlesticks from the palace. I'm still waiting for those. We left in the middle of the night to, to couch surf on – what is that guy's name? <laughs> Tyler Perry? Yes, to couch surf on Tyler Perry's mansion, okay? Mm -hmm. We were going from mansion to mansion in Santa Barbara with no place, with a baby, you know, on my hip, and I could not Oh, boo-hoo! The candlesticks. I don't have the candlesticks. I also never got my topaz ring. You know how much I wanted it, and you were just throwing it in my face that Dad wasn't going to buy it for me. It was $300, and I didn't really think that... That was the kind of price point Dad was thinking about when he showed us the Macy's catalog. Well, when you hand someone a catalog, you need to make that clear. Because it goes, it ranges in price from five to 10000 I'm not familiar with the Macy's catalog these Samantha, days. Samantha, I'm willing to offer you something better than the candlesticks. <gasps> what? Those old music boxes that I took from the Woodland Hills house. Oh, my God. I still have two of them. Wow. And if I gave you those two music boxes, oh my God. then could we just please call the attorneys and put an end to this frivolous lawsuit? I've heard your request. I've thought about it. I will accept your two music boxes. <laughs> mm-hmm. I will drop this lawsuit. But I'm going to need to be invited to Christmas. <laughs> well, um, I will speak to Harry, and um, we will definitely get that done. I'm going to send a docusign over to you, and you oh, sign I wanted, that paper. I want in the contract to be that uh, Auntie Babe, who, Auntie Babe, will be at Christmas. And uh, guess what? I want in my stocking. Candlesticks? <laughs> sure, but also that topaz ring. Topaz ring, candlesticks, music boxes, and can the Christmas be a lunch at a cute Montecito uh, restaurant Lucky's. Uh, on <laughs> December 27th? Or are you demanding Lucky's steak dinner? I would like a Lucky steak dinner. It can be on the 27th, sure. Okay, just after the holidays. Even though it's past Christmas. You have to sit at the table with me, not just send a steak out. And oh, your your uh, what is it called? Regrets. Oh, okay. Um, I just am also going to put an addendum in there. Maybe that Dad will come too. If on that luncheon day, Dad's going to be there. Dad can be there, but if on that luncheon day, either one of my children happen not to feel well, Hmm. then obviously I'm a wonderful mother and I wouldn't leave them with a nanny to meet you at Lucky's for lunch. guess who you have left? Me. My whole life. (laughs) Babe. Wait, I'm Babe. You left Babe, this gal. I actually think what Babe should do is put, (laughs) if the Lucky's lunch doesn't happen on the December 27th, Uh she does get to move in. Permanently. That's, Sometimes you got to do the stakes high because yeah. May, because Meg is absolutely going to cancel that day for sure for sure for sure. Well, there you go. I hope it works out. Did you know that Bella Hadid made the news this week? She finally admitted that she had a nose job at fourteen. You know who Bella Hadid is, yeah, right? Yeah. She had a nose job at fourteen, mm-hmm. but nothing else. And she regrets her nose. She's mad that she got a nose job, mad that her mom let her get a nose job, and she would have loved to have grown into her ancestry type of nose. She doesn't like the nose, huh? No, I mean she didn't like her is, old nose. I know. Oh, now she, she said. I felt she said she doesn't like her current nose. No, she's just saying it to like win people over. Uh, I think to be fourteen like, is young to have that kind of thing done, but I guess it is L.A. Well, when I was growing up in the rich area of Woodland Hills, where everyone would <laughs> oh, get a Jaguar, yeah, uh, there were some people that got nose jobs, oh, they, but you got it really? at 16. I'm from such a tiny town, like, that is unheard of. Like, Well, first of all, you... You're privileged because you do have one of the cutest noses in the business. It is the tiniest thing in my entire body. It is such a good nose. It's my little bitty baby nose. And it is such a good profile. You've always complimented my oh. nose. I appreciate that. If I get a nose job, I'm actually going to take your nose. I have a pretty great nose. I'm going to take your nose to the plastic surgeon and say, just give me a fortune femster. 
Yeah, it's a little a little tiny nose. I think more and more people are going to start to look at your nose and ask and, for the fortune. I ask for the fortune feemster. Yeah, let's drop the last name. The doctor's going to be like, okay, Feimster? just give me the fortune. Feemster? Give me the fortune. Give me the fortune. Deal. And uh, yeah, this is what you, you I wouldn't suggest taking any other <laughs> cues from my body, uh, but the nose for sure. Look at yeah. this. I mean, perky. It cute. also helps that I have a real chubby face, so my nose looks even smaller. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, it's a good nose. But anyway, she, you know, now says, "Oh, I wish I did it." And then two other, a couple other people have chimed in saying, "Yes, I regret getting rid of my like, you know, more ethnic-looking long nose or whatever ancestral type of thing." I, I don't know. I, I don't- think it's a mistake when anyone takes a thing that makes them different and tries to be one of everybody else. There have been some real nose faux pas. Jennifer Grey is the most iconic, um, the biggest one mistake. The biggest mistake of, of her, her life. She was in dancing, dirty dancing, dirty dancing. And Ferris she, Bueller's Day Off. She had such a a like a distinct look, and also the kind of girl like you knew that girl. You saw yeah. that girl in school. She was castable. She was. No, you know, not the conventional pretty, but like pretty and yeah. unique and all this. But and people saw her and bounce with. And there was like, who's that? Bounce. Right? The she Ben Affleck a... movie. Oh, that's what happened? She was in that movie? Like later on. That was later in life. Speaking of the, the movie where Ben he Affleck. Got, well, the movie where he gets uh, the husband's seat on a plane. They switch tickets or whatever. Wasn't that the Gwyneth Paltrow movie? Where the oh. where she's both is it called bounce or something else? I think I know what you're talking about, but I don't. The I don't think I'm was that like, familiar. Oh, the, his, the plane was like full, and he was like, "Here, take take my ticket. I'll take yours." And the plane goes down. Oh. I'm pretty sure she was in that movie, but it was she hadn't been in anything in a while, and then bounce. it was bounce. Oh my god. I'm, oh okay. And, and they and they she played like a f- airport. Flight attendant. I mean, I don't know what. Oh, something. okay. And people were like, "Who is that?" And it was Jennifer. Grey. And then that, and then she came out and said, "Yeah, I regret yeah. it. Everything." And then she got to be on Dancing with the Stars, but f- for she sure, was? yeah. And then she like got she got a short lived show about it that was like all about like it was kind of like oh. her version of Friends, but it was all about that. her mis- how she regretted getting a nose job. Like it became like a storyline, but after a while, you're like, okay. I mean, you can't, woulda, coulda, shoulda. You can't take it back, but you know, I, but the I say thing embrace about, your differences. But the is thing what about Bella Hadid, which she's not in, opting to, is she got like a fox eye done. She's had like more than just a nose done, I believe. Though you know, I don't see me Bella Hadid. I could not tell. But you. she, what some of the young girls are doing is they they get this like, what do you call it? Buckle fat removal. They get buckle fat removal to have their cheekbones. But then once you get like 30, you might look like you're 50. Like you need the fat. Oh, uh, this is why I look so useful. Yeah, you need the fat. I have a chubby chase. You have, no one would know I'm 80. They used to call me Cabbage Patch (laughs) Kid in high school. Really? Because you had chubby cheeks? And a little chubby face. Oh. Yeah. Whatever. I mean, you, are you over it, or you need to talk? I just about remember it. this one girl going, "You look like a very expensive doll that's difficult to get right now," which was the height of the Cabbage Patch. Well, that dolls. also seems like a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> it's expensive and hard to get. I mean, come on. <laughs> I remember Money it took me like a minute to figure. Your class. <laughs> Money can't buy your class. And then you started a juicy scoop, and you're like, "Oh, show look at her. me now!" <laughs> yeah. Um, thank God Ben Affleck is with J Lo. They mm-hmm. just bought a fifty million dollar house together. Whoa! And the reason why is. He got sucked into a real shitty movie that I got sucked into watching Friday night. Oh, really? I was so excited for it. Deep Water on Hulu. Deep Water. And I thought it was going to be like another unfaithful, mm. fatal attraction. The It's based on a book mm-hmm. that must have been a hit, but the way they executed it was so dumb. Oh, really? And. I was just like, I cannot believe how shitty this movie is. Basically, he meets a, a girl and marries her, and he allows her to screw whoever she wants. Okay. But then she, each new boyfriend that she gets, and it's like out in the open, like her, all the friends know and everything. Okay. Each new boyfriend she gets, he might, may or may not have killed. 
<laughs> that what? is the movie. Yeah. <laughs> like later? Like, like like one like they're like, Do you know where so and so went? And he's just like, you know, I killed oh, so him. And like, then, so it's like, Oh, you can sleep with these guys, but then I'll I'm gonna murder them. Yeah. So and not, then and then you just w- a male not working through his feelings. Yeah. Interesting. And then I'm like, and the guys she's with are just young, hot guys, yeah. but like still Ben Affleck is like hot. Yeah. Like why doesn't she but then they make him like Oh, he developed something for a drone, so he's kind of a nerd. Um, so that's what she'd rather be with, like a young, hot them. thing. Yeah, like, yes, exactly. <laughs> and I'm like, it's still Ben Affleck. Like, yeah. are you trying to act, tell me that this girl doesn't want to screw? But why do you She's think... She's just super horny. It was such a dumb movie. It was why so do you bad, think it don't has anything to do with this house? I'm saying, I feel like he's going down the road of, like, Bruce Willis doing, taking like... Taking the paycheck? Taking the paycheck. I don't want uh, that to ever happen to you, Fortune. Well, luckily, luckily for you, I have not bought a... Fifty million dollar house. Well, or you gotta pay that mortgage. It ain't she, he doesn't. She can afford it. That's what I'm saying. Well, yeah, they both can. They're both very wealthy. They're both very wealthy, but it's clearly he, going well. But he, I just hope he doesn't end up doing crappy movies like to right. do a, to, to get a paycheck. Like, well, at least he is also a very talented director. He okay. can he can sort things out for himself. I Some people this, can't. They only have. They're like a one trick pony. It's he, the second Ben Affleck movie I've seen that I didn't enjoy this year. What was the other one? Tender Bar. Oh, um, that one was a little slow. Yeah, but he, but you know, there's no point. I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I he'll just, he'll he'll snap back. Don't worry. Okay, he's got a good one coming. I'm just, it was so. Is that the Anna? De, the yes, Chicky remember they had, a, they had a little thing going yeah. on before. Do you think they did press together for this? or No, no I think he wants no one no. talking about it. Because I haven't heard anything about this movie. I know. I was like, isn't everyone going to watch this tonight? I'm so fucking excited. We sat down. I like yeah. watched it. I had Peter watch it. I had a glass of wine. And I was like, this is not good. You like, I was so bummed. You weren't horny one, once during no. the whole thing. No. And yeah. I was like, well, who's putting up with this girl just sleeping with everybody? And then, okay, Mari Povich's show is ending after 30 years. Truth be told, I had no idea it was still on the air. <laughs> I didn't. I mean, he's such a part of the, you know, the culture as far as being like, and you are not the, the father. Yeah. Like, you know, when it first started, that was just kind of like something he did once in a while. And then it just became every like episode. He, yeah. Because that was the That's thing everyone all it was. talked about. That's all anyone wanted seeing to see. Seeing guys jump up and down when they weren't the father was like, whoa. And then seeing other guys just like cry hysterically when they were the father, you were like, what's going on? I know. And, that, and that's just in there for the, and then. And then Angela from 90 Day Fiance, she's one of the famous people. She's gotten gastric and all this facial. She's been on the show? She was on the show like in 2015 before she got picked up by 90 Day Fiance. Really? Screaming that her daughter's baby daddy, who she believes is the baby daddy, is not the baby daddy because the daughter, the baby, looks to be black. Mm. And she said, and then she comes out and she's like, I walked in on my daughter sleeping with somebody else. So I don't think you're the father. That is on Maury Povich. Oh my gosh. No. Well, he's, listen, he's, it's 30 years. That's a lot. That is a long time. It's time for him to enjoy his life. (sighs) It really is. He does not need to be worried about anyone's paternity situation. (laughs) anymore no he's done uh, he's going to go enjoy life god that's crazy and then uh also judge jerry that got fu- that got canceled judge too. jerry i think that's jerry that? seinfeld not no. jerry seinfeld sorry jerry. <laughs> like, jerry seinfeld is not no doing no a judge springer, jerry springer he, oh. jerry springer stopped doing his jerry, jerry springer show seinfeld. and he had a jerry he had a jerry uh <laughs> Just, yeah, that, yeah, that, well, how are you going to take him? I know he's like a smart guy from what I've heard. Cause then he, wasn't he in politics at one point? I don't yeah. Know. But that's not the person. Yeah. I just think that, I just think they're like, let's get rid of some of these oldies. Okay. Um, Erica the Rose. She was on The Bachelor a really long time oh, yeah. ago. That's right. With the prince. You remember her? Yeah. Anyway, she went on to go be a lawyer, get married. Whoa. And this is the second time she's been on Below Deck. But they go to be assholes. Like they're, really? Like they are 
behave like they are behaving oh, like badly. Bossing people around. Yes, like uh. the like her husband is being ridiculous. Oh no! And everyone's talking about it. Would you ever go on below deck? I really would like to because the the biggest thing for me is the food. <laughs> yeah, those like. I love watching the chef prepare the meals. Me too. That's and all. Bringing I... out these gorgeous like dinners and breakfasts. That looks so fun to me. I, but Jax hates boats. She gets seasick. Oh. Uh, so I think she would put the kibosh on that because she would be miserable for like now, three days. Okay, but w- if we went, if just the stars of Juicy Scoop yeah. went on below deck. <laughs> And it worked out with your scheduling. I don't know. I don't know that I would want to be featured. Like I don't that. think they I would. They always want complain. To be- they always are. They are always like, "Ugh, they didn't like this or whatever." And you still have to pay. So I'm like, right. "Yeah, if you didn't have Rumbauer Chardonnay and you just had like something else," and I'm like, "Oh, it's not Rumbauer. I thought I put that on my preference sheet." You know, they'd be like. Ugh, the ju- the old yeah. one, the juicy scoop one. She doesn't like the Chardonnay. Yeah, you like, have yeah. to fit. They're they're making their narrative uh, fit whatever that your yeah, yeah that your group's so, assholes. So and yeah, then, so like it's and you have no control of the edit. Right. I don't think I would want to do it, but would I like to be on a boat and be fed all that f- yummy food? Absolutely, just maybe not on film. Yeah, you know, but yeah, because there's always a complaint because they need it to fit the so and so's mad at so and so, and now you're contributing to their fight. Yes, yeah. And then, and, I, and also I sunburn. So I, also the you minute know. you get on, yeah, yeah, you got to put your sunscreen. And the also minute, figuring out the tips. That's hard. It's a lot of the people. tips is really hard. You're, you're like to, you're just like well, you have to just bring wads and wads of money yeah, with you. Just you have to, wads of cash. I know. And then if it's like, <laughs> I and would then want it, it to all just be like, tell me what to give. I want okay. So you what know, I here's talk, what I give and y'all divvy it out. I don't want to have to be like counting my twenties and fifties and be like. <laughs> When you go on the show, I said, what is the tip? This is the amount. And then they're like, this is the tip. I'm like, but now I've watched it. And they'll like, there was one time that my one friend was on and there was only six of them. Yeah. And their tip, it was a lesser tip. But I'm like, there was only six of them. Right. Like, why should they have to pay the amount? But then they bagged on them. They're like, wow. When oh, they got really? the tip amount. Yeah. But I think. Um, Did they give you a, that's the, that's the thing. I just want to know, like, what you're supposed to, what's required you know, expected. Right. If they, I would like to hear like a ballpark, like this is what people normally do. And then you go, okay, you know what I mean? Yeah. But if you just have to pull it out of your butt and you've never yachted before. I also, I've interviewed some of the people that work on Below Duck and I've given them some tips. And one is the minute they get on the You're boat. You're giving them verbal tips. Verbal tips. There should also be. <laughs> I got, I would love if you went yeah. on the show and be like, here's all of your tips. <laughs> you need to <laughs> do this. You. <laughs> I, but they're always hungry and they're always waiting, you know, and uh-huh. it's taking like the girls so long to like make some special cocktail for them or right. whatever. You know what they should do? What? To bring it back. They should have a charcuterie board mm. out As there. They nibble the on minute it. they walk in, and they should go. Lunch will be ready in about mm-hmm. forty-five minutes to an hour. We're going to let you nibble on this. Yeah, Enjoy uh-huh. the champagne. We have to empty your clothes, and empty and your then clothes? we'll be meet. You know, they make them unpack their clothes. Oh, right, right. But then that'll give us just enough time. Get acquainted with the boat. Yeah, you're, that and way then you're not we'll hungry. Then sit down to your two thirty lunch. Yeah. Did, when you suggested that, what did they say? Well, first off, did you call it a shirt? What did you call it? Shirt. Shirt. Chutery. Chutery. Did you call it a shirt? Chutery. Have board? a shirt. Chutery. And they're board. like, what is she even talking about? Actually, I think. <laughs> Actually, I think what I've request, what I've said that I think they all said that that would be a, a good idea. Okay, but maybe do that to the chef that's not gourmet enough, or they want them to be really hungry for Is the it meal. Captain Sandy, she's a lesbian, right? Yeah, full blown, <laughs> full blown. Well, I like that representation for sure. Um, yes, no, she has a beautiful girlfriend or yeah. wife. I don't know if they're married. Okay, but yeah, she's she's cool, and she's yeah. always like. Like wanting to bring up the other people to like, uh, th- so that they get promoted. And She's stuff. a fan favorite, right? Yeah. Aren't, aren't certain captains like 
pop, more yeah, popular. Yeah, so Captain Lee, right now there's a sailing one. This girl is on the one where they sail. Oh, so like, I never need they, a yacht, not a sailboat. So it's a yacht sailboat. But then they go, <laughs> okay, are we going to sail now? So then they take out the sails yeah. and they turn off the motor. Yeah. And then they're like, are we sailing now? But then everybody down there... Trying to make the oh, you no. know the food, it tips over. No, and like, well, again, we I don't to, want a sailboat. We also need to figure out that. Like, yeah. why don't why doesn't the chef figure it out and go? Okay, they come on at noon. We're gonna do charcuterie board. Charcuterie <laughs> board. Don't leave out the cooter and charcuterie. <laughs> We're gonna do the charcuterie board and cocktails. But I'm not gonna plate the food or anything until we're after. We're done sailing. Right, right. We sail for f- for an hour. Mm-hmm. Then we're going to stop the sail, and then I'm going to do the food. Well, well, listen. You have a boat now. Do you? Ours uh, is not a tipping sail. Yeah, though. yours. Is ours a, is like a, a like a, a you know catamaran. So well, now boat. you can speak from experience. Yeah. Do you ever film yourself as Captain Heather? Uh, <laughs> we did a really funny uh, YouTube uh, last year. Uh-huh. Of we did it all at our house where I was. Both Captain Sandy, I played two roles, Captain okay. Sandy and a She's... and a drunk guest. Okay. And the boys and Peter, everybody, I'll repost it because it, it really didn't get the love it should. I looked at you at the views, <laughs> but I was like, what happened here? But I'll, so I'll repost it. And then I will do, Annie suggests that too, I will do a new one yeah. where we're on our boat. And, yeah, uh, but you, this time you need to be Captain Heather. Okay. You don't need to pretend to be anybody else. Yeah, you're you're right. the captain of that ship, baby. Me and my original nose. And call it a charcuterie <laughs> board. <laughs> we will just sail away. Can I get anyone some charcuterie? <laughs> okay, wait. It is pronounced charcuterie. Char- charcuterie. 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 Yeah, just remember cooter. All right. Charcuterie. It's just a big word. It is a big word. Oh, it's I, unnecessary. How meat and just, cheese. Just a meat and cheese platter, please. <laughs> Throw in some jams. But now they do them so fancy. There's like oh, all these different they're things. They're so good. There's like different fruits and there's different nuts and then there's like edible flowers there's, and then like little jams. There's businesses now that just do that. We got, I know. We got a board from this, I don't know, what is it called? Lady and Larder or something. It is like the most gorgeous. Yeah board you've ever seen in your life of like i don't it they've made it like into an art right but then it's tasty yeah hook me it, write to me oc charcuterie board ladies if oh you'd yeah like to you give have me a, a sh- board when i go on my oh yeah because th- haven't you gotten board. stuff from them before i think i saw you post some yeah no there was place. there was one and i'm sorry that i don't remember but just dm me again and <laughs> just just <laughs> just just make a board appear at my boat, and I'll 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 post about it. <laughs> do you oh like? By the way, do you yes. like the, this boat life? Are you enjoying it? I mean, I feel like I'm finally like living the life I should be living. Okay, your hard um, work's paying off. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I just feel like I just kept working and working, and my life never changed. Like right. I literally didn't do one new thing to my house Still or anything. Hills. Yeah, but now I'm like. You know, kind of, enjoy, it's kind of stepping it up a bit and and en- enjoying a little bit more. Yeah, that's um, good. You know, I'm enjoying not, the fruits of your labor. Yeah, I mean, this summer we're just gonna and, and, hang out in Southern California, hang around here. Do you go down there? But a lot? maybe next year I'll go on like a a big trip. You go down to. If anyone wants to give me a free trip to Europe, just DM me. <laughs> DM Heather. She'll post about it. <laughs> I'll post about I'll post about Europe. Totally post about Europe. Oh, uh, what, do, do I what? Do I go, go down? down is it, it's down in Laguna or It's Newport? down in Newport. All I right. mean, you can be invited if you I can. Know, my wife hates boats. I know, but if it's there's a day you want to go, super, super. if there's a day you want to go and she doesn't care, yeah, I'll, just, gets, I'll just put you on. I'll I mean, just invite you every time maybe we go. Maybe she would go at some point. She would just have to take tons of Dramamine or whatever. Not to take tons. You literally just take one. Oh, well, however it works. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get seasick, so. Neither do I. Yeah. Well, that's don't good. Don't get COVID, don't get seasick. I mean, clearly the, Jesus loves me the most. That's I, what I said before I passed out, and a lot of people I, really don't like that I said that, but I, I like it. I like it. How, um,. Do you have you had any effects since then, or everything everything's in the clear? 
You feel well. I'm fun? going this weekend. Let me get my date out here. Mm-hmm. I am going this weekend, which will be the first time I've performed. Oh, and Justin will be there. Justin is uh, going to be there. We're doing sh- stand up to the 25th and 26th. The live Juicy Scoop is the 27th, yeah. and people, you can buy it and watch it after if you want. Okay. The live Juicy Scoop. That's all at HeatherMcDonald.net. But um, make sure you eat. Was that part of it? You hadn't eaten. No, you got to eat. No, I mean, I had eaten. Oh, you had eaten? Yeah. So I... Had you drank a lot the night before? No. Not crazy? Not that much. And then I had... Is there altitude there? What is it? I don't... uh, We don't know what it is. We don't know. Okay. We don't know. People think... Just a freak thing. Or Jesus didn't like that I said that. Because you were kind of taking his name in vain? Maybe speaking a little too casually too, about him. Oh, like he he's like, I'll still spite you. But I was raised with Jesus as my best friend. Or smite so you. Like, Is it smite or spite? Smite. I don't know. They just said it's smite. ungodly. It was ungodly or whatever. That's what you, the feedback you got? Yeah. Okay. So. Well, you can't brag. I, well, I, do have, any, I do have merch available that says Jesus loves me the most. If you are you, cocky enough to wear it, you can get it. Yeah. Heather McDonald. Cuidado. That means be careful. In what language? Spanish. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. I was thinking of those. Sounds I don't even like, think the Spanish people got up after me or we, Mexican people. Um, they seem to be okay with the Jesus stuff. Well, you can't. Jesus loves me the most. You can't get too cocky about God and Jesus saying that they. Why love, not? Because they're the ones that decide who they love the most, and according to them, they love everybody the same. Right. That's the joke. That's what people don't get. <laughs> The other embarrassing part is that, that when was I was crazy, saying though. that clip, which yeah. is like right at the beginning of your, of your, of my standup, which yeah. is not the the heart and the juiciest parts, right? Right. I then said I got the shingle shot, and I go, you know, I'm going to admit it, I get the shingle shot. You have to, you cannot get it till you're 50, right? Okay. And I go, and you know, I don't mean to brag, but I still get my period, and I'm joking because. <laughs> Female comics always talk, like, that's always the thing that if you don't like a female right. comic, you're like, you're old hack talking about your period. Like, I was literally making fun of what a hacky thing that is to do. I see. say, but then when the people would bag on me, <laughs> they would bring that up. Like, and I'm like, I agree. It's not fucking funny. <laughs> like, it's the corniest sh- I was being, like, my audience, right. your audience people that come to see me humor. knows me. It's not someone but walking out, off the street. It out, it, this went outside of the Juicy Scoop sphere. Right, then when it went, like, on these YouTubers yeah. thing, then people were like, I mean, the comments, sometimes if I just, like, I'd like to feel bad about myself or get angry, I go and I <laughs> don't, Google it. Don't I read just, those. And I just read them. Don't read them. I know, but whatever. But it, the video was pretty crazy, though. I am going to do something that I've never done. What? How old this- was Justin in that picture? That's like 25 right there. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the baby face. He is a little baby. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to um, do something I've never done before that I've thought about, but I think it's time. Okay. It's a pretty big deal for me. What is it? I am going to wear tennis shoes on stage. Whoa! Juicy scoop. <laughs> That's juicy. Because it's two shows a night, <laughs> two meet and greets. That's two a lot. days in a row. And it's you don't a stand up. And, and I you do might need, get a hel- you might need a helmet too. <laughs> I might have one coming. My girl is making me one. My friend Crystal Lamas oh is my making gosh. me one. Like with bedazzled. Yeah, it's been taking her oh a really long God. time. Yeah, that's a lot of bedazzled. So there's going to be some fun things. But I mean. At least wear a stylish pair of sneakers. What do you have now? These are these white ones. I have black ones. I think I'm just going to wear these black ones. Yeah, wear black ones. They don't stand out as much. Now, when did you stop wearing heels to do (laughs) stand-up? Early on. (laughs) I don't know how any woman does stand-up in heels. That's insane. I think I just always... That was always my thing. I always wanted, I felt like... there was You get dolled up in general. Yes. And there was one time where, like, I I didn't have the right heels, and I, like, made... Someone go back and get them because I'm like I just don't think I'll be able to like do right. my act the way I feel like yeah, I won't you go- dance. And now I'm like you prance. I'm pretty. I am <laughs> so excited about wearing my juicy scoop merch on stage and being casual. Like I'm. I okay. think I'm going to look back and I'm going to be like, why the hell Did had I not before? started? Because a lot of female comics Our in cash. their specials and stuff that I love, they're all wearing the cute tennies, and mm-hmm. I was like. 
Okay. Give it a whirl. I mean, why why chance it right now with the and I know. you can say like listen, I this is my first show since I took that big spill. I'm not chancing it. I'm staying low to the ground. Also, just the time I would spend planning out my outfits and packing oh, and I'm stuff. Ne- this could just that. change my life. Like, if I yeah. just have, like, a uniform and it's a casual I one. I wear the same stuff often on stage. Have you ever had someone go, this is what I, this, I saw you three years ago and you're wearing the same thing. I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> I try to rotate them out every tour, like, but within the tour. I'm sorry. Within the tour, there's a lot of repeats. Let's talk about the tour. Okay. So you've done 87 shows I mean, I'm this month. A bazillion <laughs> shows. Well, we're, you know, I've been everywhere because I've been trying to make up for all the dates that got rescheduled for right. 2020. I just finished the last 2020 date okay. last weekend. I mean, I'm but, headed to Wisconsin this weekend. I know, and you're with, with Chris, Chris Franjola. Franjola. Yeah. He's doing Green Bay, Madison, and Milwaukee with me. Are there any tickets available for these shows? Yeah. Okay, good. Milwaukee's almost sold out. Green Bay has almost sold out. And Madison, the second show, there's tickets. Okay, well, so everybody go to, where do they go? To your fortune? Fortunefemster.com. And I really your tickets. I, do you have yeah. a lot of Canadians that listen? I mean, they, I think so. Yeah. Well, hi, right. Canadians. Are you going to Canada? I'm going to Canada. Yeah, I haven't been there in a. I haven't performed there in like three or four years. Where is your can- Canada? Uh, show? Vancouver, at the Queen Elizabeth Theater and Massey Hall. Sounds in Toronto. fancy. They're really big, so I need you Canadian folks to okay, come out. Okay, yeah. That's coming up in a couple weeks in April. And then Florida. You got, I know there's Juicy Scoopers in Florida. Tons of Juicy Scoopers in Florida. Jacksonville, St. Petersburg, Fort Lauderdale, and Orlando. Orlando's now September, but still, yeah. come on out. And then Boise, Spokane, all those places. You still have a lot. Yeah, yeah. And then, is that it? Oh, well, then I'm doing some upstate New York one. And or then, not, no, are, you, I've been taping told it's or, not are you taping a special at the end? I'm going to tape something yeah, in June. We're sorting out all that Oh, stuff you don't out. know the theater yet for yeah. that? Yeah. But I've got some Syracuse. Well, Buffalo, let me know it, where it is. Do I you will. think it'll be in California? No. Oh no. I will, uh, it'll. We're yeah. We're figuring out the theater right now, so we don't have that nailed down. But well, it's Fortune, a fun tour. It's a whole have, new hour. You have really, really grown up. Aw, thanks, <laughs> my my shark chewery Heather <laughs> from the. From the, from little, the little cocky girl. girl that I met that you first said day. I was cocky. I, I was just nervous and <laughs> overcompensating. <laughs> and also, I didn't know any of y'all, and y'all were all staring at me, and I was intimidated. I'll just never forget how you're like, see ya. <laughs> after you went, but that's to your my inter- personality. When you went to your interview, and then we were like sitting in that media center. We called the media center. I think it was I was like, like living room. Deuces. No, no you, I just remember. I remember the jeans you wore, and I remember you were just that's like crazy. And I was like, I really, wow. I really stuck with you, huh? Yeah. Were you turned on? <laughs> well, no. Then I remember they're like, we're hiring this girl, Fortune, and I think that you guys are going to really hit it off. She, Sue, Sue Murphy said, said that. that that all of y'all would hit it off. No, with me, that she's going to put you in my office because she thinks yeah. that, that we and would you were be like, a good combo. And were you like, oh god, not this lesbian? No, I was like, well, I thought because you were from the growlings i'm like well pro- yeah. we probably will but i was like she's just like so cocky but i was I really saw you walk by <laughs> but do you but do you not remember that first year i was pretty quiet i was pretty shy and quiet that first year yeah yeah and i would yeah. talk to you because we were in the office together yes. and we would talk about whatever right but i was pretty quiet in meetings yeah. and everything and yeah. finally the second year got out of my shell and got right. comfortable no it was fun and i'm i'm just so glad you took all my advice and became a success. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're thank God. welcome. Thank God I listened you're, to you. Thank I was God like, you I, listened. I don't know if I want to be successful, but Heather says I should. So, but there were some um, some some situations and stories in your life mm-hmm. of people I did not enjoy in your life, yeah. and I did think I gave you good advice about yeah. those weirdos. Yeah, for sure. And you ended up happy with a beautiful wife, yeah. and so it all worked out. You're welcome. Now, now we. I just have no life. I'm constantly touring, and uh, but it's good. It's all fun. the The road is so fun, and these shows have been cool. But I have definitely. I won't always have a tour like this where it's just like back to back to back to back to back. Yeah. Because I, I'm just trying to make up, I was trying to make up all those dates, you know? Yeah. 
and the the lovely pandemic postponed. Right, for two you guys, years. you don't know. You know, I mean, you might. You might never do stand up again after this. So you better see her when she comes <laughs> to your town. That's I, what I always say. I don't know. This could be the last time. It could be Literally, the last time. she could fall on stage like I did. Oh, please. This don't. could be please the don't. last time, Joe. She won't. But I'm saying, you know, so don't think that there's always going to be another time. If you're a fan and you're free, you should guys should go see her. Fortunefamester.com slash tour. Uh, come see me. I do love it when I, I hear the, the, the girl shout out Juicy Scoop. Oh, and with Chris, I love that too. with Chris there, it's always fun too. Yeah, yeah, they, they yell it out even more. Oh, oh. Well, have a great weekend this weekend. Thanks for coming on Juicy Scoop. Thanks Bye. for having me. Bye.